Hi there. Today we are going to continue our studies and we are to discuss the perfect solution to the problems illustrating the topic of interpretation and uh, discussion and analyzing financial statements, chapter 7 of study guide. So understanding and interpretation of financial statement is the question of high importance. To the date we have studied uh, four, all four forms of financial reports and now we have to learn how to analyze them, how to compare them and how can we conclude whether to invest or not, whether, to, whether we need to do something with the business in terms of increasing the performance, um, increasing the management, improving the management, cash management, working capital management, etc. Et so today I suggest to follow the perfect answer suggested by University of London and the examiner's commentaries. Uh, this is year 2017 and you can download the wording of the exam and the question itself uh, using the link in the description of the video or you can go to the info system and uh, in information system in lectures folder folder you can find the PDF with the wording. So let's start. The learning outcomes of chapter 7 of the uh, our subject, AC 1025, include the ability to analyze, interpret, and communicate the information contained in financial statements. And the most common, and I believe the most useful way to do so, is the use of accounting ratios we have studied recently. This technique uh, is often tested by a mini case study of this type uh, used in this question. And it is important that answers go beyond simply stating that a particular ratio has gone up or down. The interpretation, the explanation should uh, use the contextual information given in the question and make links between different ratios. So uh, you have to understand the industry the company employed and you have to understand the point of time the company is now. So whether it is starting company, it's a startup, or it is a solid company with a history and what is happening in the um, economy, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's not uh, only about calculation of the ratios for sure. But I believe that question, that optional question is pretty good because you have just to learn and understand how uh, ratio work, how ratios work. And even if you don't remember the total amount of formulas, you can calculate as maximum as you can and you will be offered, you will be uh, allowed to receive um, a portion of marks. So it's not the question uh, which will be broken up totally if you will have a mistake at the second or in the middle step. So I believe that question is pretty nice, an optional question at the final exam. And good answers on that question will draw conclusions from the ratios and the background information as we discussed before. And that information provides insight into the financial position and performance of the companies together with ratios. But excellent answers we use will use uh, the analysis uh, to draw appropriate conclusion, which will be discussed from the perspective of a potential equity investor. So not only to discuss the performance and uh, position of the company, but to answer uh, on the question of the potential investor whether to invest in that business or not. And the ratio will really help. Ratios will really help. So please open University of London uh, accounting exam, final exam of 2017, and we need zone A, question two. I will give you some time to read. Let me show you that question. Here we see question two. McCartney LTD and the description of the company. Then we are given with financial statements. And on the second page, we can see the requirements. So let's go back to our presentation and discuss it in more details. So McCartney LTD is a company which manufactures and sells acoustic and electronic guitars. And in 2017, in the previous year, the company recorded a record uh, level of sales and uh, is predicting a future increase in the next year. 
And the private equity investor is considering the purchase of a 20% holding in McCartney. The investor already holds a controlling interest in Harrison Alta there. And by the way, do you know the names of McCartney, Harrison, maybe Lennon will appear here? And a company uh, which manufactures uh, and sells a range of uh, brass instruments, Harrison, um, has a history and we are offered with the average ratios of that company, ratios which show the performance and financial position of the firm. And below we are given with the financial statements of McCartney and we have to derive out of that uh, statement using the formulas, the uh, comparable ratios and comment on that. So the requirement is calculate comparable ratios and uh, we have to use using the closing balances. This is important here and all calculations must be clearly shown. So I suggest you, I strongly advise you to show the formula you've used, to show the calculation at least of one ratio, and you can show the answer for the ratio for the next year, for example, in order to save your time. But you have to show the calculation and formula for the um, justifying the maximum points you can be awarded. And uh, the section B of the question um, requires to prepare a set of notes for the private equity investor in respect of trading and profitability, liquidity, gearing, and investment potential. So four dimensions. Normally, we always as investors look at four dimensions, at least. How to approach the type of question? When writing a report on the ratios, as in part B required, write something about every ratio, or perhaps two or three comments about each group of ratios, such as liquidity or uh, investment potential. And it's not enough to say the ratio is higher or lower because it could be seen from the calculation. Uh, so the comparison with the industry average or another company is not enough. You must say whether it is better or worse or impossible to say because sometimes it could be impossible to say whether that ratio is better or worse than industry average. But you have to give possible reasons for significant differences in these companies, in the company you are analyzing in comparison with uh, average at the industry or the competitor. You should have in mind also that uh, the recipient of your analysis, the grader at the exam, the investor you are answering, you are presenting to, and their specific needs. So you were also asked to identify other related and relevant information which would be useful, but many candidates fail to do so on the exam. So please bear in mind, so you can and you maybe even have to write something about the industry itself, about the perspective of the business itself, about some non-financial information which should be considered. And there are no absolute answers to this type of question. This is the most important point here. And you will be rewarded for the logical and informed analytical approach to the case described in the question. So you have just to justify your decision, your suggestion. It's uh, absolutely important to say uh, with 100% whether to invest or not in the company in real life and at the exam also. But you have to follow the logic you've chosen. So these are the main uh, advices I can give you before starting the solution. So let's proceed. Ratio analysis. Uh, study guide tells us that every candidate must learn the 16 or so ratios listed in the subject guide and Louis Berg's book. I believe you have that with ice creams. And you should carefully read the requirements of the question which in this case specify the number and nature of the ratios to be calculated. Because if you do know some ratios, but they are not appropriate for, uh, to that problem, it's not appropriate to write down the ratios you know answering this question. You can spend a lot of time, but you will be awarded no points. So if you do not follow these instructions, your work may not be marked. And in that particular question, we are required to calculate something about 10 ratios, 10 or 11. And here we have the name of the ratio in the table and the formula you have to use. Of course, formula is not given. 
you have to learn it or these formulas by heart. So you are given only with the names of the ratio and sometimes you are not given with the names of the ratio even. You are only asked to analyze, let's say, liquidity and financial position of the firm in terms of uh, financial stability. And you have to know which ratios will help you to do so. So here we are lucky enough to have the names of the ratios we have to calculate. And the last, uh, I believe, important thing we have to consider is the um, structure of the answer. It's important that in such questions uh, you use the correct notation where writing each ratio. Uh, is it a percentage? For example, return on capital employed uh, should be uh, presented in percentage form over a number of days, of days. For example, when we talk about inventory period, debtors period, we have to state 35 days or simply a number when we assess inventory turnover. So it's not suitable to state percentage or days there. So we have just state the number or maximum write down the word times. And many candidates during the final exam present their profitability ratios as a death amount, not as percentage. And it's a mistake. I believe that grader would deduct um, half of a point for that. So please follow the correct notation, the correct structure of the answer. I believe we can start. The first section we'll be assessing is trading and profitability dimension of the firm. So what, uh, what is happening with trading and profitability ratios and how the company feels itself uh, within the industry uh, in comparison with Harrison and in comparison with uh, its previous performance. So the first ratio we can calculate is the return on capital employed. The formula would be profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed. And uh, we have to take uh, profit before interest and tax, but in the statements provided of McCartney, we do not have profit before interest and tax. Let's refer to the question. Here, we see that we have the line which reads profit before tax. And we have to add interest somehow in order to receive profit before interest and tax. We have no information about interest except for the line within non-current liabilities, which reads 10% debentures. I have no possibility to highlight the line, the total line. Uh, but I will show you uh, the number we have to use. So within non-current liabilities, the company during 2017 had 10% debentures in a total amount, principal amount, uh, 800. So assuming that amount was used during the whole year, the whole financial year, and assuming the percentage given, we can calculate interest expense for the year. Of course, you have to state that assumption during the solution. So this is the only possibility here to derive interest and to calculate profit before interest tax because you have no other information. So we have to take net profit before tax and add 80, 10% out of 800. This is the suggestion uh, made by examiner in the answer. So we have to sum up uh, profit before tax 462 and assumed interest 80 and divided by capital employed. What is capital employed? Capital employed is the sum of non-current liabilities and equity section. So here I am trying to highlight these numbers and it's impossible, unfortunately, but you can see the total reserves, the total equity uh, of the company is 2045. And if we add non-current liabilities, 800, we have just discussed, the total amount, 2,845, would be the capital employed in the business, the capital employed in the business for financing operations. So we have to use this amount in order to calculate uh, return on capital employed. So we can see here that the ratio for the 2017 was 19 and something percent. It has increased in comparison with 2016. 
and it is even higher than ratio than the respective ratio of Harrison over there. Great. So uh, before we'll be discussing only calculations. So we have to discuss calculations only, and then on the next slide we'll uh, discuss the essay section. What should be written about trading and profitability? What should be written about return capital employed? So the first ratio was calculated. Let's continue. Next ratio, gross profit margin. Gross profit margin is the gross profit divided by sales. Very simple. We have to take uh, revenue, deduct cost of sales, and divide it by revenue. Let's look at the figures at the exam wording. Here we have revenue. Here we have cost of sales. We, we even have the gross profit calculated, but we extended our calculation because we have to show the clear calculation. And maybe sometimes you won't be um, given with the line gross profit. So your calculation should be stated as um, clear as it could be in order to better to understand uh, how you've done your work, your job. And if we divide gross profit by the revenue, we can assess the gross profit margin. The next uh, ratio would be net profit margin, and we'll be discussing the other profit which could be taken out of the financials. Calculating that ratio, we can see that the gross profit margin decreased significantly in comparison with 2016, and it is also lower than Harrison's. The next ratio we have to assess is net profit margin. And study guide insists on using the formula um, uh, which uh, uh, looks for interconnection between profit before interest and tax, operating profit and sales. So if you try to Google net profit margin or search in other sources, you will find net profit divided by sales. But since we have to follow the study guide in order to pass the exams, we have to stick to that formula. So we have to take profit before tax from the financials. Then we have to um, add interest as we did before while calculating return on capital employed for finding the profit before interest and tax meaning and divided by sales. And that ratio will show us uh, what is the uh, profitability, what is the efficiency of business as a whole. So we refer profit to the sales. And we can see that the ratio we have is above industry average, if we consider Harrison to be industry average, and uh, even improved from the previous year. And we can assess it as a nice sign, and we'll discuss it later in a section. And the last ratio here, which could be assessed, which could be evaluated somehow, is asset turnover. Asset turnover is the uh, sales divided by net assets. Net assets is the difference between total assets and current liabilities. Total assets, net of current liabilities. Eventually, net assets equals to capital employed. So if we refer to the original data, to the wording of the problem, we can either deduct out of the total assets 3,800 current liabilities of 955, or we can use capital employed, as we did before, 2,045 plus 800 of long-term liability. These amounts are the same. So sales divided by net assets gives us the ratio, which is um, narrated, which is discussed, presented in times, not, a, not as a percentage not as just an amount. So we have to state time so that X here, that means multiplying. And we can see that uh, asset turnover decreased uh, a little bit. And um, now when we have calculated the full scope of ratios, giving insight to the trading and profitability, we can uh, derive some conclusion out of there. So first of all, let's highlight the changes one more time. Return on capital employed increased, and this is good. We can see green color here. Gross profit margin decreased and lower than industry average. If we consider Harrison to be industry average, which is bad, we can see red color here. Net profit margin increased and above industry. And asset turnover is um, hard to assess somehow. It's impossible to say whether it's good or not. 
it definitely decreased uh, with the comparison to the previous year, but it is still above Harrison meaning. So we have to discuss to consider that somehow. Let's um, consider the first and the last ratio before return on capital employed, which increased, and asset to know, which is hard to say how to evaluate the changes in it. And the um, comments here could be like this. I give you a minute to read. So we can see that um, improvement in return on capital employed assessed uh, positively, but the main discussion discussion is dedicated to asset turnover. So it's in, it's uh, hard to say what was the reason for improving return on capital employed. That's why they just you know, suggest a comparison between previous year and current, and no reasons suggested. But asset turnover could be discussed. Uh, there is um, one reason which could be uh, which could uh, state that uh, reduction might indicate that efficiency with which SSI use has deteriorated. And there is another reason which could be used. You can use any, uh, you can suggest any, that uh, assets acquired in 2017 have not yet uh, fully contributed to the business. Maybe they're in the process of installation, maybe uh, the workers are still in the process of familiarization uh, themselves to the new equipment. But we uh, for sure can uh, assess and can uh, comment on the increasing of non-current assets. So here we can see that non-current assets increased by 400, more than 400, thousand pounds from the previous year. So 20% more of non-current uh, assets were purchased. And uh, we can conclude that the business is developing somehow, investing in non-current assets. And by the way, that comparison between absolute amounts, between, uh, we call it horizontal analysis, horizontal analysis of statements. So you can see we horizontally comparing two figures from the previous year to the current year. The same we can do with the sales. We can see that sales increased by 20, 25% during the period. This is the horizontal analysis. It's not about ratios, but still this is um, the reading, the understanding, interpretation of financial statements somehow. And here, the comments on increasing the number of non-current assets could be valued uh, significantly. It could be uh, of value here, of use. And the most useful sentence here is uh, the last one. A longer-term trend would clarify the picture. You can use it any way you like because it's like so common, but so uh, like deep that you have uh, to assess all the ratios in a longer period, but not at one point of time. It could, uh, it suits everywhere. I believe at every ratio, in every situation, you can uh, write something like that, that the longer term trend would clarify the picture. Universal sentence. Then we uh, have to compare gross margin and net margin, and we can say that gross margin decreased, net profit margin increased, and here we have an explanation, some comments. I will give you more than one minute to read the suggestion comments. So here uh, we have um, um, explanation on changes in gross profit and net profit margin. And by the way, in the last sentence, we also can see here that uh, sales have increased by nearly 15%. That is uh, that horizontal analysis we have been just discussing. Sales increased by 15% 
So it was my mistake to say that it was 20 to 25, more 15 percent, but still the huge increase. And um, you can comment on that. And you can you can comment on any change you can see in financial statements without uh, calculation ratios. And uh, we can also see here the universal sentence, the second from the end. Either way, this is a marked change that requires investigation. So you can comment on any ratio which has significant discrepancy that this is a marked change that requires investigation. So this is the second sentence which could be useful anywhere. I believe we can continue. The next section we have to assess is liquidity and working capital management. So here we have current ratio and quick ratio. Current ratio is the interconnection ratio between current assets and current liabilities. And uh, we have calculated that. And uh, I will repeat one more time. You have to show clear calculations. So I suggest you to show the formula current assets to current sales at least one calculation for one year. So this is current assets total divided by current liabilities total and their meaning. And current ratio could be like presented as one amount. It's not times, it's not percentage. So, so the answer could be presented as uh, you can see it on the screen. And for the second year, for the second calculation, you can just uh, state the final result without calculation saving your time and maybe paper and here we can see that current ratio is above two which is quite good we can cover all the current liabilities for current assets and uh, marginally above Harrison Alta there mar marginally above, above industry which is good also quick ratio is the same liquidity ratio uh, which excludes stock as the less liquid asset out of the current assets and we can see that quick ratio is above one also, which is quite good. So we can uh, uh, cover all our current liabilities and short term with current assets. And uh, in terms of liquidity position, uh, it um, tells us that the company is financially stable. And that ratio is above industry average, but a little bit uh, lower than in previous years. The next three ratios shows us interconnection or not interconnection, maybe management of working capital, debtors collection period, creditors payment period, and inventory turnover. These three ratios are suggested as uh, those to be calculated and compared with industry or with Harrison as the main competitor uh, within portfolio of the investor we are talking to, we are presenting to. So debtors collection period, the period from credit sales to the payment received. So we have to uh, rate the debtors amount to the sales and multiply it by the number of days per year. And by the way, in uh, requirements, we have the clear statement to use closing balances. So ratios should be completed, should be, should be computed using the closing balances. Normally, in that formula, you will find the average debtors. So you have to take opening debtors, sum it up with uh, closing debtors, and divide it by two in order to calculate average debtors throughout the year. But here, we have the clear statement to use closing balances. And I believe that if you compute ratio using average, you will have the marks deducted because it's not the something which is required by the problem by the examiner. So we have taken closing debtors divided by sales during the year and the debtors period is 40 days. The same the company had in previous financial period. And this is below the Harrison LTD and we have to discuss that matter and um, give a possible reasons for that and possible uh, possible um, future actions from our customers. Creditors payment period. Creditors are our suppliers who supplies goods to us and allows us to pay later. So when we purchase something on credit, creditors increases 
the total amount of creditors increases. But since we do not have any information about credit purchases and that problem, we have to state an assumption. Maybe you'd better to write it down. So let's assume that average stock is not volatile during the year. So opening stock is almost equal to closing stock. That uh, gives us the um, like um, opportunity to uh, suggest that cost of goods sold amount is almost equal to credit purchases amount. Purchases amount. So we can use cost of goods sold here in that formula. Creditors divided by cost of goods sold and multiplied by 365 will give us the number of days uh, from the moment the credit purchase was made till the payment done to the creditor. So here we have uh, 32 days and we have to say days here because this is period is measured in days. And uh, that period is below the industry average significantly and even below the period we had in previous year. And the last one, inventory turnover. Inventory turnover is not a period, but the times the inventory uh, totally sold. The times, how many times per year our warehouse totally um, empty <laughs> becomes totally empty so how many times we totally sells our inventory the company totally sells uh, its inventory so we have to divide uh, the total amount of good cost of goods sold during the year by the stock by the closing stock as it is required by the problem cost of goods sold divided by closing stock gives us 13 times and 13 times is below the horizon and industry level and a little bit below the previous year uh, meaning so we have to consider that because it's not so good let's highlight the changes one more time and then discuss it in more details current ratio increased and above the main competitor which is good quick ratio is uh, above the industry average but decreased in comparison with previous year so it's hard to say whether it's good or bad but it at least higher than one which is good for sure uh, debtors collection period the same in comparison with previous year and below the market but it's really hard to assess that change we have to discuss it from different angles from different points of view Creditors payment period decreased and uh, for cash management, this is bad for sure. It's not a good sign because it decreases the amount of money in uh, possession and working capital. So inventory turnover decreased and below the market. So we have to consider that something while commenting on these ratios. So let's start with liquidity, current ratio and quick ratio. Current ratio above the industry, quick ratio had to say. Um, so the comment could be like the current ratio improved slightly over the year and it is also in line with what is generally regarded as satisfactory, two to one. Actually, one to one is regarded as satisfactory. And uh, though the quick ratio has declined marginally, but it is still better than Harrison. And no problems with liquidity has Macart. As for working capital management, debtors and creditors period, we can comment on that as follows. I give you the minute to read and then uh, I'll add something. Here you can see that in the first sentence they compare receivables to the sales. So if we look at the um, exam problem, they are comparing total receivables to sales, that ratio. So they are comparing 1000 to 
9, almost 10 in 2016, and 1,230 to 11 and 200 in 2017. So they are comparing the proportion of receivables to sales and uh, uh, commenting on uh, unchanged ratio between that but uh, the um, possible um, future outcomes out, out of there that company would have no power to decrease that period of 40 days more because industry and the main competitor Harrison has the longer period and now the companies uh, the customers could use their bargaining power of customers uh, insisting on increasing that period so this is uh, 10 days 20% uh, shorter than uh, in the industry and customers could uh, like insist on giving the larger creative terms or uh, that short period could be justified, could be explained by the discount offered to the customers. As, we, as we've seen before, the total sales increased but gross profit margin decreased, maybe because uh, McCartney LTD you know, wants to expand its share on the market and offers discount to the customers in order to attract new customers. So the total amount of sales increasing, but profitability of sales decreases because of discounts. And the payment period is so short because of early cash, uh, early cash discounts offered, early cash payment discounts offered. So we can suggest any reason. And as for credit days, we can see that 32 days is quite low and maybe McCartney um, has to negotiate better credit terms from suppliers because industry shows the better terms, much better terms, almost uh, twice. So it's not so good to repay its credit uh, its accounts payable so fast because uh, we can use that cash in turnover. And the last ratio here, inventory to know, we can see that this is this ratio is below the market and even below in comparison with uh, decreased in comparison with the previous year. So uh, the reason for that um, could be that uh, stock, the average stock, uh, increased because of increase in sales, or the other reason, the alternative reason. There is some danger that the inventory could contain certain obsolete items that may require writing off. So we can assume that company holds some items which is not uh, in demand, some items which are not in demand. And uh, from year to year, they these items keep place at our warehouse and increase our stock. And maybe we should um, analyze the stock held and write off the obsolete, uh, the items which are out of demand of the market. Um, the conclusion for that section could be that the high level of inventory, and we can say that the inventory is quite high, and overdraft, this is already uh, also absolute amount analyzed. So we can see in current liabilities overdraft in this year and previous year, which is not a good sign, and overdraft even increased. And receivables compared to that of payables suggest that uh, a labor intensive company, that company is, or one where considerable value is added to bought in products. So that means that that company, McCartney, purchases musical instruments and then uh, somehow rework them or add something to them in order to sell it subsequently. So it's not the pure trading company, the not pure merchandising company, but the company which adding value to these instruments somehow. And of course, company has to make something with overdraft and uh, high levels of stock in order to improve its working capital management. The next section, next portion of ratios we have to consider is gearing. The last one, I believe. Gearing is interconnection between long-term liabilities and capital employed. Or you can choose formula which uh, uh, assesses the interconnection, the relativeness between debt and equity. 
we suggest to use debt to capital employed, and we can see that debt is only 28% out of capital employed. And uh, this is above, uh, this is below uh, the market, but above a little bit higher, marginally higher in comparison with previous year. So it's hard to say um, from the ratio itself how to assess it. But if we compare, if we compare um, the cost of debt, which is 10% per annum, we can see it here. The cost of debt is 10% per annum. And we compare 10% per annum with return on capital employed. We've been calculating, I believe, 20 minutes ago, which is almost 20%. We can tell, we can conclude that company use debt effectively. Their debt uh, helps company to improve its uh, return, to improve its profitability. And since the return on capital employed is nearly twice, higher than the rate of interest on the debentures profitability is likely to be increased by a modest increase in the level of gearing. So uh, if we a little bit increased our debt, it's, uh, it, it doesn't affect, it uh, hasn't affect the total profitability of the firm. So it's like normal. So that gearing could be assessed as not risky and uh, just given the, uh, the um, space to chase the opportunities the market suggests. The last thing we have to make, we have to conclude, we have to make a conclusion now we say about investment potential. And by the way, this is required by the task. Here we can see that we have to assess trading and profitability, liquidity and gearing and investment potential. Uh, normally, you can calculate some uh, ratios which help to assess investment potential like price to earnings. EPS, dividend cover, or something like that. But since we are not given with the market price of the share, we can just conclude something out of the information derived from the uh, financial statements and ratios calculated. So the conclusion would be that overall, McCartney is more profitable than Harrison. And probably uh, uh, we should invest in that company, but at a fair price, buying shares at a fair price, and that would be uh, would give us the significant synergy um, between two companies because when you have in your portfolio um, with the control package of shares uh, two business uh, occupied in the same industry, you can have some synergy between them. You can maybe cut costs because of logistics or marketing uh, uh, issues and costs, or maybe you can. Uh, use uh, the expertise of one firm for the purposes of another, etc., etc. So now they are not uh, sole competitors, but the uh, part of one concern, one big company, limited trading. So this is the conclusion. The last uh, point I want to emphasize is the marking that type of ratios. Normally, in the section A, we have one point for each ratio calculated for the formula and calculations and the meaning, the correct meaning, and one point attained for comments for ratios and overall position. And of course, the better your comments are, the higher overall grade would be. So 